Buddha treated his students like adults. If he had wanted to, he'd have told everybody about all the amazing and wonderful things. that he'd learned during his awakening, and told them what to think, told them what to do. But instead he taught them how to think for themselves, how to gain awakening themselves. Even when he was teaching children, he taught them adult things, or how to be adults, basically. The novice's questions start out with the fact that all beings subsist on food, which is the big, harsh fact of life. It's also the main proof against the idea of intelligent design. If there were intelligent design, we could all live off the dew of the, every morning. We wouldn't have to harm anyone else in keeping our bodies going. But this is the fact of life. The fact that we have a body means we have to eat, and when we eat, there's suffering involved, even for very strict vegetarians. The farmers who have to plant the food, the people who have to transport it, there's a lot of work that goes into that. So when the Buddha introduced the topic of causality, he started with a harsh fact of life. This is what causality is all about. There's feeding that goes on all the time. when he taught Rahula about truthfulness. The teaching was pretty harsh. If you feel no shame at telling a lie, he said, your goodness is empty. It's thrown away. You can't be trusted. And he taught him to look at his actions, to learn from his actions. That's basically what it means to become an adult. You do something and you notice what happens as a result, and then you learn from that. You notice and then you take what you've learned and you apply it to your next action and your next. He says, this is how you purify yourself. Nobody else is going to come along and purify you. You've got to do it yourself. You have to learn how to be observant. You have to learn how to deal maturely with your mistakes, not hide them from yourself, not pretend they didn't happen. You have to be adult enough to be willing to tell your mistakes to other people. That's what it means to be an adult. You take responsibility. When he taught role in meditation, started off with the, the images of making the mind like earth, making it mind like water, fire, wind. In other words, earth is not driven by likes or dislikes. You throw something disgusting on the earth and the earth doesn't shrink away. You th throw anything really nice in the earth, the earth doesn't respond. Same with fire. It can burn disgusting things and pleasant things and doesn't make any distinction between them. The same with water, same with wind. They wash things away, they blow things away, and it doesn't matter whether they're disgusting or not. They don't react. That was the Buddha's beginning instruction to Rahula, and the kind of mind you have to bring to meditation. You don't go by your likes or dislikes. And that doesn't mean you become indifferent, because the next step is to work with the breath. And he says you learn how to breathe, or we're constantly aware of the whole body. You have to breathe, calming the breath, so you are sensitive to pleasure or pain. But in order to learn how to do this, you have to put your likes and dislikes aside and look and see what actually works. All of these are instructions in how to become an adult. how to deal with complexities, because cause and effect is a very complex issue. When we look at dependent core arising, it requires
requires an adult mind to handle that kind of complexity. And the Buddha gives basic instructions on how to handle that, how to approach it, how to be an adult in your meditation, how to take responsibility for yourself, looking at things in terms of what you do and the pleasure and the pain that results. Once you've got those basic principles down, then it's simply a matter of learning to be more and more observant as to what works in getting the mind to settle down, what works in giving rise to insight. He gives you help. I mean, look at the canon, 45 volumes, and a very large portion of that does come from the Buddha. But his vice is basically keeps pointing you back to yourself, as he keeps saying, it's the Buddha's only point the way. It's up to you to follow the path. This means you have to be responsible. You have to be clear about your intentions, mature about admitting when you have some unskillful intentions in the mind, and the results that come when you act on unskillful intentions. Because it's only by observing that again and again and again that you finally get tired of those intentions. When you really see that there is a connection between unskillful intentions and suffering, needless suffering, that's when you can find the escape from that suffering. This is the only way you can do it. You have to learn how to learn, basically. What's worth observing, what's not. And the Buddha, again, points you there. That's the issue of needless stress that comes from unskillful states of mind. That's where he points you. He says, look here, look here, look here. And then it's up to you to see. And then when you've seen, to take that knowledge and put it to use. This requires that you be responsible. So it's a pretty radical, it's a very demanding teaching. The question is, do you want to be an adult or not? There are lots of people out there who'd rather not be adults. And there are lots of people who would like to tell them what to do, what to think. Even in Buddhist circles, you find different kinds of meditation where, as they say, everything has all been thought out, everything has all been worked out. Just follow the instructions. Don't think, don't add anything of your own. I found it interesting that a lot of these methods will also emphasize that the teaching on that self, they say, is egolessness. Any sense of pride, any sense of independence is a bad thing in those meditation traditions. You have to learn that one tradition would say to be totally passive and just aware and, and not be very equanimous and just let your old sankaras burn off. And above all, don't think. Or if you're going to think, some of the traditions say, well, learn how to think the way we think. And they have huge volumes of philosophy you have to learn. Squeeze your mind into their mold, and then they promise you awakening. But it doesn't work. I mean, the awakening comes from being very observant and seeing things that you don't expect to see. Developing your own sensitivities, your own discernment. Because after all, the issue is, as the Buddha said, the suffering you are creating. And if you don't have the basic honesty and maturity to see that, you're never going to gain awakening, no matter how much you know, no matter how equanimous you are. You've got to take responsibility. And you have to be willing to learn how to make mistakes and then learn from the mistakes. It's interesting that when the Buddha teaches Rahul, he doesn't say, don't make mistakes. He says, if you make a mistake, and it's expected that you will, this is how you handle it. This is how you learn from it. That's teaching Rahula how to be an adult. It 
So it's up to each of us. Do we want to be adults or do we want to be continued to be treated like children, told everything to do, told everything to think? Not being willing to make any risks, take any risks. But if you don't take risks, you never got awakened. And that safety of being a child is all very delusional. It's the childish thought that wants to learn that everything you need to need to do has already been thought out. Or there's simply another childish thought that there are lots of different ways to the end. It doesn't matter matter which one you choose. It's you can choose whichever one you like, and you can be guaranteed that all the paths will lead to the same place. Well, again, that's putting your likes ahead of everything else, and that's precisely what an adult can't do. You have to realize there are risks in this meditation path. There are some paths that do lead to the goal, they do lead to the end of suffering, and other paths that lead all kinds of other places. And you have to be responsible for which path you choose, which one looks to be the most honest. And this, of course, throws you back on your own honesty as well. Sometimes you read about teachers who've turned out to be major disappointments. I mean, they really do horrible things to their students, and students complain that they're victims. But in every case, you read the story and you realize you know, the student should have seen this coming. So again, you have to be responsible in choosing your teachers, choosing the path. And once you've chosen a path that looks likely, okay, you have to be responsible in how to follow it, how to develop your own sensitivity in following that path. Because after all, what is the path that the Buddha points out? There's virtue, there's concentration, and there's discernment. These are all qualities in your own mind. We all have them to some extent. It's learning how to develop what's in your own mind. That's going to make all the difference. His discernment isn't going to give you awakening. The Buddha's virtue, the Buddha's concentration is not going to give you awakening. You have to develop your own. And nobody else can develop them for you. They can give you hints, they can help point you out, help point out important things to you. But the actual work and the actual seeing is something you have to do for yourself. But well, the question is, are you mature enough to want this path? Are you mature, are you mature enough to follow it through? Nobody's forcing you. Just simply realize the dangers of not following this path and make your choice. <laughs>